This is the CarterCast, the pre-proposal show for dating couples designed to make engagement ring shopping easy, understandable, and fun. You can get the four C's anywhere, but only here can you get the fifth C called Carter. I'm Josh, and this is CGA GG, former president of the AGS and current CEO of Jack Lewis Jewelers, John Carter. Hey, buddy. Hey. How's it going? Welcome back. Yeah, we haven't done one of these in a while. I know. It's true. I know. Uh, and today, we are talking about my favorite topic, metal. Metal. M- metal. Metal! I can't hit that note. Can't? Mm-mm. All right. Gold and titanium. Precious metal. Tungsten and Sterling Slayer, Pantera, Megadeth, and Cobalt and Platinum. All kinds of metals. Yep. ACDC. Choose for <laughs> All kinds you can choose for your engagement ring or wedding band. Uh, we will cover them all, and I okay. expect this will be the definitive metal conversation. Probably ever had. Ever. They crossed all the internet. Yeah, as for epic, sure in the jewelry industry. As epic in metal, as epic as metal is. Uh, but first, let's pop the question. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're new to the show, we like to start lighthearted and ask Carter a question of multiple choice, which he hopefully fails miserably. Uh, and this one is about metal. So, which metal band released a song called Metal Health, Bang Your Head, in 1983? Is it A, Iron Maiden, B, Quiet Riot, or C, Twisted Sister. Metal Health. I Bang believe. your head. I think that's Quiet Riot. That is, that is correct. That's correct. Well done. Thank well you. played. You know your 80s hair metal. I do. <laughs> very, very well. I do. That was, that was, that was my era. <laughs> it's in third grade. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's start here. Uh, we, we've talked about engagement rings. It's usually focused on the, the diamond uh, or sometimes on the ring itself in terms of the, the setting and the design or you know the, the bridge and the gallery and the filigree and all the kind of fun stuff right. that sometimes goes into the ring. Uh, but we don't often talk about what the ring is made of, and that's the, the metal. It's kind of um, important. Yeah, it kind of seems neglected. I remember back in the day when I was you know, thinking about proposing to my fiance, now wife, and, and I knew she wanted a, a solitaire princess cut diamond. Right. Um, but if you would have asked me what metal she wants, I'd have been like, eh, steel? <laughs> actually, actually, that's exactly the look you gave me when I did ask. <laughs> Adamantium? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vibranium? Is that, I mean, he didn't know. I, I have no idea. Uh, so in your experience, um, is it true that metal often gets overlooked? And if so, why? Yeah, it's kind of an afterthought a lot of times, right? Because uh, sometimes the purchaser of the engagement ring knows what the wearer wants. They'll say uh, they want a silver ring. They'll say silver. That's the way most people would describe white gold or platinum as a silver metal. Mm -hmm. We don't typically, you wouldn't see an engagement ring typically in sterling silver, as we'll talk about probably, Mm -hmm. because it's not a suitable metal for everyday wear, which you want in your engagement ring. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to wear it every day. Um, So yes, I I do think it's, there are some misconceptions Mm -hmm. uh, of of all of these metals, and hopefully we get a chance to clear some of those things up. So let's start with gold. Yeah. Um, So if I'm totally new to this, I've maybe heard of 24 karat gold, maybe because of a song by Bruno Mars. Right. Um, I've heard of maybe white gold and, and rose gold. Yes. But I might have no idea what any of those are yeah. um, or how they're different. So before we get into uh, those specifically, I guess let's start with gold in general. Why gold? Um, wh- wh- why has it been such a popular jewelry metal throughout history? It's important to say that all of the metals we're going to talk about today are precious metals. Okay. Right. And so all precious metals are somewhat soft. Okay. Uh, in, in comparison to stainless steel and uh, iron and, and and things like that, it's important to note that uh, in a piece of jewelry, the metal needs to be malleable. It needs to be able to be worked on. It needs to heat at a rational temperature. So yep. somebody with a torch or in modern day uh, jewelry repair, we're using laser welders and things like that to re- re- repair prongs. Uh, it's something that can be manipulated easily enough to hold gemstones. But it's also durable enough to be worn every day. And mm-hmm. you know that everybody knows gold is soft. Gold is soft. Mm-hmm. Because if gold wasn't soft, it couldn't be moved around and, and set over the tops of gemstones mm-hmm. and things like that. So gold, particularly now when I say gold, when we say gold here at Jack Lewis, we're talking about yellow gold. Okay. If we're going to talk about any other gold, we're usually prefacing it by uh, its description. We're saying rose gold, which we'll yeah, talk about, or right. white gold, which we'll also talk about. Yep. Uh, but if we're talking about gold, mm-hmm. we're talking about yellow gold, they use the the term 24K. Yeah. 
Yeah. Not to be con con confused with 24 karat magic, thanks to Bruno Mars. <laughs> it is 24 karat means that it is pure. I almost started singing. It, just <clears> so I know. You, know, like, you can I, hit the notes. Hit I the stopped notes. myself. Head to toe, so play. Wow. <laughs> Hey, this is our metal show. So I got, I got the. I stand corrected. I thought he could hit the note. I don't know. I can't. I, yeah. Did I hit? I don't think I hit the note. Not that. Not on the Bruno Mars. Yeah. Go back. Stick to the metal. <laughs> but the carrot. Yeah, it's carrot is important. So twenty four kt. Yes. Not ct. Ct is refers to carrot weight on gemstones. That's a gemstone thing, right? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So twenty four kt means that the gold is twenty four of twenty four parts pure gold. Mm. You'll also hear twenty two carat gold. 22 parts out of 24 parts pure gold, and it's hmm. alloyed with other materials. So it so makes it a little less soft. So whereas in, the, the CT in, in gemstones like diamonds is more of a weight, is it fair to say that the KT, the carat in gold, is more about purity? It's a measurement of the purity, correct? Okay. Yeah, the, exactly right. Exactly right. Okay. And we've talked about that when we talked about carat weight. Yep. It's the only thing that ever confuses people on gemstones is, well, not the only thing, but it is one of the big confusing things about carat is they think it's a size. It's not. Yeah. It's an actual weight. But in this case, we're talking about the purity of the metal. Hmm. For the most part, in the United States, you're dealing with the vast majority of gold that you're going to walk into a jewelry store, particularly for an engagement ring, would be 14 carat or 18 karat pure gold. So yes, yeah, so what's that mean? So the difference between 10 karat, 14, 18, 24 karat. What's yeah. The... So well, it, sometimes if you look on the inside of a ring, you may see the number 585 okay. on the inside of a ring. That's a European way of indicating the purity of the metal. 585 means that that ring is 58.5 percent pure gold, hmm. or 14 karat. Yeah. Uh, if it says because half of twenty four would be twelve, so that's how because based on twenty four, twenty four base system. That's correct. Okay, yep. uh, eighteen carat would be eight fifty, uh, and so you typically for an engagement ring. Again, what we've talked about in these other videos is an engagement ring. One of the characteristics you want in your engagement ring is the ability to wear it every day. Yes, twenty four carat, twenty two carat. If you have gemstones set in it, mm -hmm. typically is not conducive for everyday wear. So I assume it's easier to bend and smush pure twenty four carat gold. Um, if you have a ring made out of that, right. something it can, you can do it in a wedding band, in a plain wedding mm. band. If you're if you're not relying on it to hold some gemstones in place, it makes mm. a really good band on its own. Okay. So an alloy. What's an alloy then? In that an alloy is when you take a, you know, in this case gold, you mm -hmm. take the original metal and you you mix it with another metal to help increase the tinsel strength of the of the metal. Okay. So in gold, quite frequently, you're, the other metals you're adding metals that are stronger than the gold. Okay, so, so the reason, so if you wanted something that's just pure gold, it'd be 24 karat gold. And the reason you might get something that's less than that, that's less technically pure, so something 18 karat, 14 karat, yeah. whatever, is because you're mixing it with another metal. Correct. In addition to gold for the purpose of making it stronger. That's right. Okay, interesting. And since we're generally having these conversations about engagement rings, yeah. we're usually saying, okay, what's, what's best to be worn every day? Yeah. We're, we're probably going to gear you towards 14 or 18 carat. Of some because sort. it'll be stronger and more. Because it'll be stronger. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. While 22 carat and 24 carat are beautiful and they're a richer color gold, they're really just a bright yellow. And as you start to add other metals to it, you typically are cutting that color yeah. away. It gets a little brassier. Huh. Uh, they're just not conducive for an everyday engagement ring. Make fantastic um, fashion rings. We have yeah. a, a designer in the store called Gurhan, which deals with handmade Turkish beautiful 24 karat gold yeah. pieces of jewelry and that's but those are fun fashion pieces that sure. you probably don't expect somebody to wear every day gotcha. i feel like i hear the most about white gold so what is that uh, and why is it so popular for engagement rings yeah i would say white gold probably is the metal that we use 80 to 90 percent of the time uh it is the most affordable option of the of the white metals and so it gives you that nice white sheen uh, it is typically alloyed with n nickel. There's a, there, there are traditionally sometimes it's iridium and sometimes there's other metals mixed with it as well. But nickel is generally what it's what it's alloyed with. Mm -hmm. Silver sometimes you'll see that in, as an alloy in white gold as well. Yeah. It's it's durable because it'll have similar durability to the yellow gold. It is important to note though, there is no such thing as white gold. There is no such thing technically as rose gold naturally. Right. Yeah. These things don't come out of the ground that color. So okay. white gold in particular, as we're as we're talking to people at the diamond counter, will say, look, white gold started off as yellow gold. And they alloy it with these other white metals to make it appear white. 
right? But so what you end up with is a little bit of a dingier looking metal in its, in its raw state. Mm. What you see when you walk into a jewelry store, you see all the gleaming white gold mm -hmm. rings in the case. All of those rings have one additional step at the end, which is rhodium plating. Mm -hmm. Rhodium is a very high polish, bright white metal. It's extremely rare. Uh, it's extreme. The price of rhodium is through the roof right now. And so when we finish a piece of jewelry in, in, the, in, the, in our shop, mm -hmm. Dan and Mariki in our shop, the last thing that they do is they have to rhodium plate that ring because yeah. what that does is it covers up that that original kind of dingy color hmm. that white gold is. Hmm. Given some wear, that rhodium plating wears off. So customers will use the term, I want my ring re-dipped. That's what hmm. they mean, is they want their ring. We call it, uh, we, we, call, it's kind of, we, we kind of think of it as an engagement ring spa here. We call that service re-blinging re your ring. Yes. Uh, re-blinging. Re-blinging. And that's what that is. It's polishing the ring. It's getting, it's getting rid of uh, cra deep crack, or, uh, deep scratches, mm -hmm. getting that down to the surface of the ring, cleaning it thoroughly, and then getting that, that bright white rhodium finish on it at the end so it looks brand. But that's primarily something that you would do with white gold rings. Uh, they can't. You can you can rhodium plate just about anything. I have seen people rhodium plate yellow gold oh. rings. You could do that. It just it's just a plating on the surface. But it's most common on white gold because of like you said the inherently dingy nature of this yeah. of the metal in its natural state. That it just it's it works Correct. the best on. White They'll gold. also do it on platinum. You can okay. also the, uh, mm. platinum, which we'll talk about, really doesn't need it mm. generally. It, it it's a nice finish at yeah. the end. And what's nice about doing it on platinum, because platinum is also a bright white metal and not it's it's naturally a white metal. It doesn't you don't see it as it wears as much. That's why you don't typically see people rhodium plating yellow gold rings, because as it wears, you would see that yellow gold mm -hmm. much faster than you're gonna see the the natural or the the alloy white gold poking through. One of the more common questions we see is people asking about white gold turning yellow. Uh, why does that happen and what can you do about it? It happens exactly for the reason that I said the okay. rhodium wears off yep. and then you get what's left underneath. It's not technically the white gold is not turning yellow. The, the rhodium is wearing away mm. and you're seeing the white gold, huh. right? And so, but it appears that the ring is turning yellow. Now, certain things can cause that to uh, go faster. Hmm. Hard water is hmm. not great for rings. So people who, who live in the country, if you have well water, if you have things like that, hmm. Uh, that's that's not great for your finish. Little known fact is when you swim, uh, it's not that the pool water will uh, destroy your gemstones and things like that. They typically won't. But if you let chlorine dry on your metals, gold, platinum, any of it, steel, mm -hmm. uh, it can put it makes little pits hmm. in your metal over time. So always when you swim, just a insider tip: when you swim, always rinse your pieces off with cold water when you get out of the pool. You can wear them, wear them, wear them, enjoy them. You're more likely to lose them if you take them off. So wear them, keep them on, and then just make sure you rinse them real quick when you get out. Uh, so things like that will do it. Chemicals can do it faster. Uh, bleach, uh, things like that can can cause some damage. It's typically something we can reverse in the shop. It's not a big deal. People no. generally freak out when it happens, but uh, we're, we're, it's just a simple. Putting my, my precious ring into a vat of chemicals. Yeah, we didn't, <laughs> don't do that. But no, I mean, sometimes if you get ammonia or, or, yeah, yeah. or something on it, it can make a really nasty spot. We're going to take great care of your ring. Trust me. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take better care of it than you did. Comes out like the Joker. <laughs> uh, those things. And then, of course, what else causes it is just wear. I mean, yep. if you think about it, as I'm, you know, wearing my ring and, and living my life, right, mm -hmm. and and it, you know, as I'm writing and it's 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 rubbing against my desk or right. I smack a filing cabinet or I'm chasing kids and things like that, it will make that finish wear off over time, and that's what people say. Well, I just don't know what I did wrong. You just lived your life. That's these things are meant to be worn and enjoyed. They can always be polished up and, and made to look new again until they can't, and then you know, and then we get to a point because you'll get to a point yeah. where you. You do wear away a certain amount of metal, and every mm. time we refinish a ring, you lose a little metal. Remember mm. what I said earlier? We're polishing it down to get yeah. to where the scratches is. Yeah, scratches are. That means we're 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 poly You're gonna make fun. Go ahead. Me speak English. No, oh, thanks. <laughs> That's good. Little Simpsons. So we're polishing. Little, little Ralph Wiggum. I could tell. I could tell by the look on your face. You wanted to make a joke at my expense. <laughs> so how good of a friend am I that I stopped? You really did. I appreciate that. A really Thanks, genius. Man. Yeah, you're welcome. I was on a genius point, and now I'm not. So, you know, whatever. Wearing, wearing white gold down, I think, is where you were. Yeah, so when you polish it, you are losing metal to get down to where the scratches are. Yes. And so you don't want to redo that every year. Uh, we kind of say a good rule of thumb is every five or six years you can redo your, your, your rings. And then what I was saying earlier is it, 
you know, you can always redo it until you can't, which we've lost enough metal over, you know, a couple of decades of wear, uh, then it's probably time to consider resetting it or, or, or doing something different with white gold and yellow gold. What about rose gold? So what is that? And why might someone choose rose gold? Rose gold's a beautiful metal and yeah. it, it's, it's, it just has more of a coppery feel, kind, mm. of a, kind of a rose cast to it. Okay, so 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 uh, yellow gold. If it's twenty-four karat, so especially if it's pure, it's going to be yellow. It's mixed with nothing. Right. Uh, white gold typically is mixed with nickel. Right. And rose gold typically mixed with copper. Copper. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And that I don't think you'd probably see uh, rose gold any higher than maybe eighteen or nineteen karat. I don't. And probably really essentially the same thing with with white gold. Okay. I've, I've the highest I've ever seen that a manufacturer was using was nineteen karat. Mm -hmm. um, if you use less than that, you're not really going to see enough of the copper to make it look rosy. Right. Um, it'll eventually lose its its color a little bit over time and start to look a little bit more similar to, to yellow gold, but that's generally what it is. But rose gold is a beautiful metal. Um, I think some people kind of dismiss the they may dismiss uh, rose gold as a as a uh, trendy metal. It's not. Yeah. It's been around for a long time. Hmm. You know, our grandparents were using rose gold and you know before so it's never none of these metals that i ever say even though i said earlier that we do 80 percent of white gold uh that's not really a trend uh because that's been going on for probably 25 or 30 years more white gold than yellow gold hmm. but that doesn't mean yellow gold ever goes away we're always doing yellow gold rings it's just we do more white gold a little bit of rose gold here and there but white gold for sure is always the preference right now what does it mean for something to be gold plated or gold filled or verme? Did I pronounce yeah. that correctly? Yeah. You what, would, what, what's the difference between those and why would I want that? You almost would never see gold filled or verme. You'd, you'd never see in this, uh, you'd never see in an engagement ring. Okay. Because they would just, they, they just don't wear. Uh, ver, ver, think of verme as a very thin layer of, of coating over the top of the thing. And, and gold filled is it was really more internal, but it, it just it's still not going to wear quite right. Okay, it pits. It doesn't. It just doesn't look great. Mm -hmm. And the 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 difference with with uh, that is gold plating is very similar to like a, a, a verme, but it's going to wear off over time. Similar to what I said earlier about rhodium plating. Yeah, gold plating is just the same thing using gold. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Not good choices for everyday rings. All right. Um, so aside from gold. There are a ton of other metals out there. Um, silver, platinum, palladium, titanium, stainless steel, cobalt, tungsten, lots more, I'm yeah, sure. Yep. Um, if for whatever reason I don't want gold for my engagement ring or wedding band, is there a top three list of other metals you'd recommend and, and why? I actually, the conversation probably should start with platinum before it starts with gold. Okay. Uh, because I always say that, that money being no object, mm -hmm. platinum is always the best metal to use. Hmm. Always. There's lots of reasons for that. Platinum, actually. Such as. <laughs> oh, I thought we were done. <laughs> <laughs> Take my word See for it. Right. Uh, it, is, <laughs> it is a very pure white metal. So, the prob so somebody who wants a, uh, a white metal ring, mm -hmm. it has all the benefits of that white gold ring with none of the detriment. Meaning it doesn't turn color. Turn color. Remember, white gold kind of starts that way because yeah. of how they alloy it. But platinum, because it's a pure white metal, mm -hmm. they don't need to, and it's very, it's, it's strong, it's more mm -hmm. durable. Now remember, it's a, it's a precious metal, so like we said in the beginning, it's soft, they'll scratch easy, but it has a very high tinsel strength, right? It melts at a very high temperature. It has a very dense molecular structure, and we'll talk about the advantage to that in a second, so it's heavy. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it will never turn color because its base is very pure. Now mm -hmm. it's always alloyed with something else, but the other metals that it's alloyed with, one of which you mentioned there is palladium, yeah. um, iridium, um, those metals are all members of the platinum group. And they're all, they're similar characteristics. Hmm. The only reason why they use them is they're a little less expensive, so they, they cut the, the price okay. down a little bit, right? But they still wear very well, and they're, they're a really good choice for a ring. The, the biggest advantage that platinum has is its high molecular uh, it's, it's dense molecular structure yeah. because it, remember what I said earlier about gold wearing away? Mm -hmm. Platinum almost won't do that. Hmm. So a ring that was made 30 years ago 
you don't really lose any weight by 30 years of wear on that ring. Mm -hmm. It almost it almost maintains 100% of its original weight. Mm -hmm. That's because of the, the density of the molecular structure. And when we refinish a ring, we're not really polishing away any metal. You're just mm -hmm. kind of moving the the surface around to get it kind of back together. It's a very, huh. it's a beautiful metal and it's, it's much more expensive than gold. But if you look at the price of platinum versus uh, white versus gold, it's a fraction of the price. It's not nearly as, as, as expensive per ounce, hmm. but the reason that it's more expensive is it's much more difficult to mine and it's much more difficult to work with. So it melts at a higher temperature. So the things that are making it expensive are all things you can't necessarily see. Hmm. Um, but the benefits, you know, if somebody buys a, a, a really significant diamond, you know, three, four, five carat, you almost always by default would put that diamond in platinum mm -hmm. it, because otherwise it's like, it, it's like putting, unless somebody really has a, has a, an affinity for yellow gold, mm -hmm. but if you're not, and it's going to go in a white metal. My, my comparison always is if you don't put a five carat in, in a platinum ring, it's almost like putting the Mona Lisa on black velvet I mean, because it's just the, <laughs> okay. it's just the preferred way to do it. Yep. And it was, it's, it's what the, it's, it's what the, uh, a significant diamond like that deserves mm -hmm. and, and, and it will, it will wear well and mm -hmm. it, it maintains its finish and won't, won't lose its color yep. and things. I can attest my, my wedding band is platinum. Yeah. It's just solid platinum. And it, it is, it's, It'll look, sometimes you'll hear people say it looks darker over mm -hmm. time. Yep. And technically that's true, but that's not so much to do with the platinum as it is the way that light is interacting with the really fine scratches that gets on it. Yep. Uh, when you have that refinished, mm -hmm. it'll look brand new. Yep. And again, then you didn't really lose any weight from, how long have you been married? 16 years. 16 years, yeah. Just celebrated the, the anniversary. I know, years. I bothered you on your anniversary. <laughs> you did. <laughs> You're always welcome to bother me. The marketing emergencies. <laughs> So, okay, if, if... By the way, did you know, fun fact, yeah. platinum. Mm -hmm. In the 1780s, King Louis the Sixteenth of France said that platinum was the only metal worthy of a king. Didn't he get his head cut off? Yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean he didn't have a point. Um, all right, so so platinum, is there a couple of metals that you'd recommend if I don't want gold or, or platinum, like those, if I want engagement rings? I really wouldn't for engagement rings. Okay. So those are the big three. Uh, the other metals that you mentioned, yeah. uh, they, they silver, palladium, platinum, titanium. Mm -hmm. Tungsten. Tungsten. Aren't there a lot of like men's bands that are made out of interesting things now? They are, but men's bands and engagement rings are two different sure, things. Yeah. Because, because men's bands are typically not full of gemstones. Uh, sometimes they are. Sure. Uh, titanium, they can, they're doing some really cool things with nowadays mm. uh, because the cool thing that they can do with titanium is they can change the color of it. So mm. you can change it like a you know, bright blue or, or pink and mm. things like that. So they are doing some cool things with that. It's just very light. It, it's a very lightweight metal, but it is very durable. Yeah. Uh, as of yet, it's not a fantastic engagement ring choice. I think as de designers continue to play with it, that could change. But for the most part, those other metals that you that you mentioned, yeah. they serve a role in this process, but they serve a role as a supporting cast in the in, in, as as alloys. Gotcha. All right, uh, let's uh, pivot towards the end and let's do a like flash round, fa fast fast questions. Okay. Uh, quick quick lightning round. That's I think that's the idiom I'm looking for. Good. Um, so general grab bag of questions based on some common things that people might have heard about. Uh, tarnish tarnishing which. Which metals tarnish or, or lose their luster over time? Anything that can be done about that? Sterling silver would be one of the biggest culprits of that, which is why it's not a great everyday ring. You know, I hear, you know, how many, if you, you'll probably do a counter at the end of this, how many times I used every day, <laughs> every day, every yes. day, every day. Well, now we will. I mean, now that's, that's a few more. <laughs> uh, but the reason that that's so important and we talk about it so much here is because uh, managing the expectation of what a client can get out of what it is that they purchase is so important. They really need to understand that what they're asking for us to do is provide something that, that can be worn and enjoyed. And not everything allows itself to do that. Sterling is a beautiful metal. It makes a beautiful, uh, we sell a lot of sterling silver. We don't sell it in engagement rings because mm. we know that it will disappoint. Mm. Uh, if you, if it sits in, typically if sterling is being worn, the contact with the skin it typically won't tarnish. Most people don't know that. If it sits in a drawer for a month or two and you bring it back out and then it has that, that kind of oxidation, it's easy enough to fix, just a little polishing cloth or we can do a number on it real quick for you. Mm -hmm. But uh, if it's being worn every day, it's, it's a pretty good metal. But uh, other than that, gold, 
even in 14, 18 karat, even in 10 karat, which is a lower karat mm -hmm. gold, it really won't tarnish too bad. Sometimes like 10 karat yellow gold, sometimes you'll see a little bit of a, of a change of that. But white gold, platinum, all of those are, are nice metals that typically won't do that. Okay. Uh, you mentioned tungsten. Yeah. That's a, uh, again, like titanium, it's a man-made metal. Uh, it won't. It's very durable. That's a better material for a men's band. Tantalum, which is a which is our, our rings from Benchmark here. Mm -hmm. um, tantalum is a rare earth metal. Mm -hmm. Again, doesn't make great engagement ring material. It's a very dark material, but it's really dense. Mm -hmm. Uh, and where this this ring that I wear is black diamonds in in tantalum mm. wears wears kind of beautifully. Yeah, uh, just wears kind of started off really dark black and now it's just a, a kind of a gunmetal gray. Yeah, so that that was kind of the, the beauty question, I guess, the tarnish and, and the luster stuff. Uh, what about the durability question? So what what makes a metal start to warp or or scratch? Uh, is there a hardness scale similar to gemstones yep. that metals have? Yep. Uh, you look. We really look more at tinsel strength and things okay. like that, and uh, on on gold. But it's important to note. Everything will scratch. Stainless steel will scratch. Uh, tantalum scratches. It all will scratch. Uh, probably the most resistant would be titanium and tungsten to scratching, but they have their other downfalls, and those again don't don't play as much into engagement rings as they would into wedding bands. Mm -hmm. uh, but everything again, what I said a second ago, managing expectations, knowing. That what I'm going to have, I'm going to put on my finger, I'm going to wear it, and I'm going to enjoy it. Don't wear it on your honeymoon and look down and see a scratch on it and let it ruin your view of that. That's mm. just one scratch in a, in, a, in a lifetime full of <laughs> opportunities to scratch that ring. Uh -huh. uh, just just chalk it up and, and realize it's part of the character of, of the piece. And you just have to wear it and enjoy it. Just like your relationship. It's all symbol. It's leave all it, symbol. Leave it to me to tee up the metaphor and for you to take credit. <laughs> it's all poetry, man. What, what about allergies? Do people need to consider if they might have a skin reaction to a particular metal before choosing it? Allergy to precious metals is fairly rare. Okay. Um, most commonly, and I guarantee that, that somebody, if, if anybody watches our videos, I think they do. A handful. Seven. If one of the seven people that watch yes. this video. Yes, right? good odds. If it feels like a lot of work for you to do all this for seven views, I'll watch it six times. Yeah. So somebody that watching this is going to say, oh, yeah, but I have this, I, when I wear my ring, I get this red ring around my finger, Yeah. right? That That's very common. Mm. But the question to ask yourself is, did that happen when you first bought the ring? And it almost always, the answer is no. Because if it was an allergic reaction, it would happen quickly. It would happen to the metal right away. Right. What ends up happening is it, it usually doesn't develop until four or five, six years down the road. Mm. And it's because, one your ring is dirty and something is on the inside that's causing that reaction mm. or two, you've changed uh, lotions in today's world. Hand sanitizer can do this. Huh. It gets caught underneath and inside your ring, there's those little holes on the inside of your ring underneath your center stone. Mm. That's where uh, lotion, hand sanitizers, perfumes, mm. if you've detergents, if you've changed any of that and that gets caught in there, huh that's what you become allergic to. And so dermatologists call it contact dermatitis. And what we can do is just do, again, that re-bling your ring, which we can do on any material, uh, gets rid of all of that and uh, I would never think generally of that. fixes the problem. I would never think of that. Like just stuff that's getting trapped under there over time, yeah. stuff you wouldn't... And, it's, and, it, and it really is yeah. brutal because it really it, it, huh. it cuts some people down you know, below the skin. It, it's red and, 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 and gets kind of nasty, but it is typically not the metal's fault. Um, it's never metal's fault. Metal is one. Metal, metal has just been around at least since the late seventies, <laughs> and will always be there to comfort me. Uh, when can, I need it most. can you resize any metal? No, really, no. Huh. Um, Which ones can you not resize? Because I'm thinking if I I'm trying to predict down the road, maybe just some time I have to resize my ring, so I would want to know that. Right. The good, the easy ones to resize sure. would be platinum, mm -hmm. white gold, okay. yellow gold, any of the golds. Uh, silver typically can be resized, but the man-made metals, so titanium, tungsten, uh, those typically cannot be resized. Hmm. Uh, sometimes a manufacturer might be able to swap it out for a new size. Um, tantalum is an interesting metal, the one that I mentioned earlier, the rare earth metal. Hmm. It can technically be sized up or down a half size. Some of this is misleading any the way, though. If you're talking about a men's wedding band, and let's say you have a white gold men's wedding band, but there's a pattern all the way around. Mm -hmm. 
it's not super easy to resize that anyway because then you lose the pattern. Yeah. And right. while the metal would allow itself to be resized, the ring won't necessarily allow itself to be resized. But these are all certainly good questions to ask yeah. when you're at the counter because on an engagement ring, life changes too, you know. Um, or as we say sometimes, gold shrinks. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't really shrink. But, I see what you did there. Yeah, but but you know, if a <laughs> ring has to be sized up, it has to be sized down. That those those things are good things to consider for the longevity of the ring. And then also sometimes on engagement rings, how far down are the gemstones? That might make it mean that a ring cannot be resized because yeah. the gems come down too far. Hmm. And so by cutting and pulling out the shoulders of that ring, you, you're creating space up here that you know makes stones fall out. My guys in the yeah. shop, you know, curse me, and we have to reset those. Um, well, they do that anyway. They do that anyway, but not generally just about that. Uh, <laughs> but then that also can create some wearability problems on that. So we mm -hmm. can, there are thresholds on, on just about any piece of jewelry. You can't just size it up and down on an infinite number of sizes. Hmm. I'm going to predict this next one is going to be the most uh, interest. People are going to have the most interest in this next question. Uh, can I melt down my existing metal jewelry and reuse it in a new piece of jewelry somehow? So I've got this old piece. Right from my grandma, from whoever. I don't want to use it as this piece anymore, but I want to preserve that metal because her metal symbolic meaning. It's metal. Can't I just? I've, I've seen it on television where you can just like melt metal. Can't you do that and just like create a new thing out of it that I want? So I'm still using the same metal. Metal really does need to be refined before it gets reused. Mm -hmm. And the, and if we just take a bunch of metal and melt it in a crucible back there and then form it into a new ring, yes, it would make a nice bright shiny new ring. But what you're not seeing is internally, there's probably porosity or air bubbles that got trapped in that process. Mm. And it was from some of the impurities that were, as the ring was made, or as the ring was worn, maybe. I, I'm not even sure technically, probably the metallurgy behind why that, that is. Huh. Um, but it doesn't make for a very long-lasting piece of jewelry mm. because that porosity makes the piece very spongy and brittle. And so a ring like that, yes, you could do that, but it would be it would likely be broken. Now, there are people who would have the facilities to do that. Mm. And most jewelry stores could help you if that, if that was, I've done that for clients over the years, but you have to find somebody who is basically a, a refining type service mm. that can do that and ensure you that they are using, and in fact, reusing that actual gold rather than just providing new refined gold. That, so it is gold that you would mostly be able to do that with. Like, could you do that with any of the other metals? It might even be easier with platinum. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so I'm wondering if, if there's a difference between the pure 24 karat gold versus if I'm using an alloy of some 10 karat gold. Is, if I try to melt that down, would the fact that it's an alloy make it more difficult to... Yeah, and the lower the quality, the worse it yeah. would get, right? 10 karat, because it's it's not the gold that's the problem, but it's separating the gold from the other metals that right. are in there that are, that are the problem. Huh. So again, it's not... There are people who literally... That's, that's what a metallurgist does, right? They, they have PhDs in those things for a reason. They would understand exactly how to do that process, so it would need to be done by somebody like them, not, not your really less smart friend, John Carter. I thought about getting a doctorate in metal. <laughs> wow. I didn't. Yeah, I know. I've heard you say I don't have enough hair. Zinger! So, if price is driving my decision, which metals are most and least expensive and why? Uh, well, it depends what color you want. If you want a yellow ring, your really only choice is gold. And okay. so then what drives it is the uh, purity of the gold. Okay. If we're just talking about the metal itself, there are certain designers that would be more expensive than other designers, and of course it depends what you're doing uh, under, underneath. I'm a big advocate, by the way, as you and I have talked so much about ideal cut diamonds and things like that over the years. Mm -hmm. I love putting beautiful diamond just in a simple solitaire setting and just letting the diamond speak for itself mm -hmm. and then putting, if you're gonna do diamonds, do them in the wedding band and things like that. I love that look myself, mm -hmm. and so I, I, I sell a lot of engagement rings that way, just me. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're going to do it that way, then yellow gold, minimum, you really want 14 karat. Hmm. Because 10 karat's not going to wear super well. Yes, it'll be a little more dense, but the color is just less attractive, a little bit more brassy. 14 karat to 18 karat is typically the wheelhouse for that. And then if you're going to white gold or platinum, white gold would be the next choice. Platinum would be the top of the line choice. Do the engagement ring metal and the wedding band metal need to be the same? metal if I'm getting a wedding set? That is an excellent question that yeah. people don't think of. Mm. Uh, short answer, yes, they should. Mm. Uh, long answer, people have done lots of things. One of the things that will change it, my answer is, my counter question always is, are you going to solder the rings together? 
Mm. Because if you're not going to solder them together, then it it only matters in the sense that they'll they'll look a little different. The colors will change a little bit over time. Obviously, the platinum doesn't change, and the white gold will change a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but if you're not soldering them together, the the metal that's a little harder will grind against the metal that's softer, and it'll wear it away faster than if you than than huh. if you did it two of the same. Um, so it is a good idea. So you because you have one edge of your engagement ring that would just be constantly yeah kind of scratched. that happens anyway. Even if you do white gold against white gold, it'll still will grind, but yeah. it'll be magnified if one is harder than yeah. the other. Right, because if you remember the Mohs scale that we talked about in gemstones, mm -hmm. the way to scratch something is something of equal strength or something harder. But the harder thing will wear it away faster. So that's the counter question: Are you going to solder them? Uh, no, then you really probably got to do the same. And if you are going to solder them, you could get away with it, but it, just know that they'll look a little different. Okay. So get back to the back to the beginning where we talked about um, as we wrap up here the. People that don't think about it they're very much, um, it's just not on their mind. They're thinking about the gemstone. They're thinking about the actual setting or something fun in the top of the ring. They're not thinking about the metal itself. If, if that's still me, if, if I don't care or if I don't have a preference, uh, even after kind of hearing about it, what, what should I do? What's my, what's my best option? Uh, what's my default can't miss metal? Um, what do you recommend if I have no idea? I still default to start with the stone. Start with the diamond and let the diamond the way that I think about it is let the diamond choose the setting. Start with the diamond because maybe you come in and maybe your budget was just using a round number or maybe it's $5,000, mm -hmm. right? And you came in and you found exactly the diamond you want and by the time you pay tax and all those other things, it's going to be $5,000. You might not have a lot left in the budget to, to get exactly the setting that, that you want. That's okay. Um, get the diamond that you want. Put it in a solitaire for four or 500 hours or whatever it is and... Uh, go from there, but choose the diamond first and then kind of while this is important and we're taught we're dedicating an entire episode to the metals mm -hmm. I still think the most important choice in the process should be the gemstone itself What goes in the center? How much do we spend on that? What's the best quality I can get for that? And now what do we put it in now if you have a specific style that the recipient wants we can start with that and then and then go from that 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 way and then explore some of those those uh, it just depends how insistent the recipient is on this is the style of ring that I want. Um, I have enjoyed this. I, 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 kind of, it's fun. It's I assume I learned something probably. I didn't. <laughs> I'm a, a metal is my favorite music. Once again, you've taught me nothing. <laughs> I taught you how to smile. I taught you how to <laughs> laugh. Thank you for this, uh, for this mosh pit. Into, yeah, it's, it's, it's it has been metal. fun. I do, um, I do enjoy these. Yeah, it's, good. it's great. We'll be right back with Final Facet. Jack Lewis Jewelers engagement ring start at just $4.99. So don't worry about how much you can spend because size doesn't matter. Love matters. Browse the collections at jacklewisjewelers.com. So we always close these out with just kind of a summary of what we've talked about. And I think as it applies to metals, the gemstone matters the most. Choose the gemstone and allow that gemstone to choose the setting. Platinum, given all of the options, platinum is still the best metal to use, but white gold is a really nice alternative. It's much more affordable, uh, and there's definitely no shame in that. And as we say with diamonds, nobody's ever gonna walk up to your finger and say, wow, that's a really pretty white gold ring, or that's a pretty 95% pure platinum ring. At the end of the day, you're gonna look down and see that piece all the time, spend your money on your diamond, make sure that that's your main focus and the metal and everything else is kind of secondary.